I mean, to construct the history and mobilize arts and really to re, re, reinvent the Romani pen, which is like the basis of Romanistan, in fact. <laughs> so that's, that's one of the reasons why I have started to be very much involved in arts. First, I imagined a land or an island. <laughs> Um, where you have uh, Romani people and you have a society which is egalitarian, but um, this means that, <laughs> um, that you need to work a lot of our people to become egalitarian because all the structures, traditional structures, are either by age or either by family, so it's nothing related to equality. Um, not that other societies are constructed otherwise. <laughs> All societies are like the same. But my imagination is that it will be this. So let's say that it's a utopia, right? So um that was the first um and that you have and that I have that we have the uh, an island, a big island, because we are many. So um uh, the leaders of the Roma uh, become the governors. And uh, they are really kind of, they have a very good connection with people, which we miss now, from my point of view. I mean, originally, because you have big families which are connected to, between them. Now, you have marriages with immigrants of first wave or second wave in Italy, in Switzerland, in UK, everywhere. So it's like... So my magician then started to, <laughs> to, okay, so I was like, why would not have a virtual Romanistan? <laughs> no land. We don't have to buy a land or fight for a land. We are not very much of a fighters. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really. I mean, we are survivors. I'm proud of it. <laughs> but we're not very much of fighters. That's my land. In my lane, the army will not be very successful <laughs> or very qualified <laughs> in the Romanistan. Army will not be. Oh, I don't know. We have to construct one to defend. But it was a virtual Romanistan. So I started to, you know, say, why do not create a space on the internet where it's only ours? But then how do you attract people in there? How people become attracted by this Romanistan online. What is the, you know, what are the things which for our people are important? Because, for example, for us, the Romani elite, it's very important that we have, you know, um, campaigns that you speak about uh, racism and fight racism, that we co construct and reconstruct and deconstruct all the time. Uh, policies, <laughs> initiatives, art. What is really what would for our, our people would be attractive? So I was thinking of like matrimonial services. <laughs> you know, to the very definition of the Roma identity, you do not become Roma in the traditional way. You become, I mean, you become Roma in traditional way only after you are married. So you are called Rom and Romni. Only after you got married in Roma. So the Romani identity is very much related to the marriage, which is not, I mean, not everybody has to be married, right? <laughs> but in the same time, I realized that that's one of the attractive points for them. Like you have marriages, you know, like a matrimonial agency, which will like attract people in the Romani, a virtual Romanistan. And I thought about a name and I was like, what can what name we can give to this part virtual Romanistan? I was like thinking about this and I was like, I don't know. It's like because also I imagine that there are some Romani young people who are very performant in technology. Sometimes and I used to talk to my colleagues, to my former colleagues, because I'm no longer uh, I took a break from the Romani edits on mobilization. Okay. It's one. It's one year. So um, what really is 
I don't find it's it's a it's a virtual space where our people um, stop to be being stop being um, fatalists and take actions. When I say that is because this kind of apathy, a social I call it a social apathy. They it's very difficult to get them involved in something which is like related even to their rights. And on the other hand, it's like I worked for the last year with um, with from a begging on the streets here in London. So uh, and sleeping on the streets. So I think Romanistan is very much like a wedding, <laughs> but a more egalitarian wedding where you come together and all kinds of Roma. I mean. I also think that this kind of this our public discourse when you come to these are Kadrajoma, these are Lovaria, these are Sinti and everything, it's in this modern society it's no longer valid. I mean starting with me, I'm a mixture of Caldera and musicians, so what is Roma identity today? So you can become part of the Romanistan. Then who decides if you are Roma or not? That's another question which I raised in my head. Was like what? The constitution of Romanitan, which is like who? Not who is Roma? Because I think this is a question of personal choice. Or but in the same time, to write down the the how to say the rules which you play with. I mean. What are the rules or what are the moral principles we play one with each other? Because others, they have the Bible. I mean, some of the Roma have Bible too, because they are Christians or neo-Protestants or Muslims, everything. They have the Quran or the Bible, but not all of us. When it comes to sitting together, there is no moral compass there. So... um I imagine a Romanistan where this moral compass is really internalized in each of us, you know. Um, because when it comes to to working together or to mobilize our people, um, sometimes this moral compass disappears because we don't know what it is or how it should be um, inside. So, for example, the mutual respect or um, the respect of elders, or the equality of men and women, or um, what happened if some of us are wrong in what they are doing. But that's for me kind of Roma, Romani pen is the constitution of Romanistan. And that's um, what should be inside, and who decides what is inside? That's another question. So what is the structure of power in our, in our state? <laughs> the power structure in our state. The other one, I think I, I could be the president as well. <laughs> you know why? Because in our movement, very rarely, you got to be voted by the people or validated, not voted, but validated by your people. Yeah, and this virtual Romanistan, I think it should be full of music, full of, you know, images of arts, full of, you know, you can enter any room where you have this kind of matrimonial agency, arts. <laughs> um, even the intergovernmental organizations have lost their role in the last years. And meanings, meaningfulness, like UN, um, and maybe sometimes Cons Council of Europe, um, and OAC. But what is the, how to say, I mean, because we have tried, and many of us have tried, not me, but um, some other younger colleagues have tried to be in politics, in the mainstream politics, 
And the whole discussion was, do we have an ethnic party? We go to the mainstream parties. And I, I don't think it's either or. I think it's both, if you ask me. So what is the point of having a Romani standard? But um, Romanistan is an underground country. <laughs> Which I told you does not destroy the land as it is, or doesn't want the land, but wants that its people and constituency are the best ones where they are. So that's for me, Romanistan is an underground nation or state. What is the moral compass to Romani pen? Um, and we have to discuss in a virtual space like that what Romani pen could be, which take we can take years maybe. <laughs> but this is also a legacy which um, I have to say that it's a legacy which I continued from Nikolai Georgiev because uh, he he is my late husband and he was one of the thinkers of the Romani <laughs> all of Romani uh, movement. Um, so we have started this discussion before he died about Romani pen and how a new Romani pen. And this discussion started personally in our couple because he late in the late, his late years, he started to question my feminism. And many of my colleagues, men especially, have questioned my feminism. And that I split the Romani movement and that I had created frictions and that um, I am the one to be blamed for that. Uh, and I said, okay, maybe I have done all these things, but I doubt that I've done these things. But in the same time, I said, who decides how I play my identity? Who are you to tell me, you guys, to tell me how I have to do it? And why the Romani society should stay as it was hundred years ago in terms of structures. And, and, and all the discussion started to be to not like an intellectual debate, personal one, very personal one. I mean, International Romani Union have had in 2004 or five the statement on Romanation. Um, you had in Turkuji in Romania, uh, a local initiative where they declared Romanistan. It's a, a compact community. So there's nothing new about that. I mean, the, the new thing about it is that it's put together in one place. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't have done without the solidarity and not Roma. A true solidarity, not a paternalism or maternalism uh, attitude towards us. But with the partnership, let's say, partnership and solidarity of non-Roma. So I don't think we can construct it without the partnership and solidarity of non-Roma. So some of them. Not all of them. <laughs> and I think also it's like these non-Roma, they are the ambassadors of the, of changing, of changing of the attitudes of their own people when it comes to how other people see us. So they can be the, the kind of the voyageurs, the, like, you know, the pigeons. <laughs> the white pigeons will be the mm. black pigeons. <laughs> um, it's like you need to have like a parliament and, you know, and as executive, like people who are in charge, if someone asks support for a problem they have, in any country around the world, then someone should be able to answer to this, those needs. So um, that's um, how I see it. Um, it's like we need, when it comes to leadership, we need structure and rules. And these are the, the Romani pen and whatever we will do. Some people blame me that I have started this feminist craziness. Radical thinking for me is like, for example, if a group says we, I think we should need to have an army. You are not good enough. You haven't done anything. 
then we should allow it to discuss. That they are free to discuss about that. Why? Well, who are we to do not say we don't need an army or something like that? Hmm? Or, I don't know, people say more radical, they say, like, or maybe an opposition party. <laughs> do we have a multi party? I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, what is the ideology of the new state? It's a leftist, it's a rightist, it's a, what is in my imagination is very too left. <laughs> very left. <laughs> not very, because it's like, no, it's not anarchic, because there's no structure. <laughs> but uh, there's structure in it, but uh, in my imagination, it's a, it's a socialist. So... For me, this kind of, yeah, Romanistan is this Roma scene that is the new era. It's also the name of our uh, society where the women, the cyber witches are the leaders. They have the wisdom. They control the, the technology and they also have concrete solutions to, um, uh, to no fascist politics and concrete solutions to the climate crisis that the whole world is, uh, yeah, facing now. So, yeah, I think Romanistan slash Romacin will be for me this, yeah, this perfect utopian society where finally we have uh, peace is a safe place for us where the women are in the, in power is a matriarchy. And uh, they also know how to control and how to invent new technologies. They invented these uh, witch boats that are robots as witches, <laughs> robots that they perform witchcraft and uh, they help us in our yeah, anti-racist fight. And uh, it it's a virtual place because because it can't be a physical place. I don't want uh, when we talk about uh, a territorium for us, a territorium that will uh, will be you know as a guardian for our identity. I can imagine you know a physical territory because I. We have this example of Israel that was formed. The genetical information that we receive, uh, you know, that is this new discoverment, like the scientists, scientists discovered that the pain and sufferance can be transmitted, yeah, can be transmitted genetically. So, yeah, it's like when when we get born, you know, we also receive this genetical information of pain and sufferings, and we have to bear this with us the whole life. So I imagine, you know, that we can develop a future spell that can clean our genetical information so we can start our lives without this uh, remembrance of uh, intense sufferings and pain in our brains and in our conscious and in our bodies. So the people who will access Romacin will receive uh, yeah, like uh, witchcraft support of cleaning <laughs> themselves from all these sufferings and they will also receive talismans that will protect them. Romanistan is, is all of us. It's something that we carry inside of us. It's it's home. Um, it it's you know when I see another Romani person um, anywhere in the world, I'm in Romanistan. I mean, you know, there are all of these ideas about kind of Romani people as you know we're a nation without a state, right? We 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 you know, and I I think. In a lot of ways, you know, that's, that's how I feel. We are, we don't have a state. I don't want a state. I don't want the trappings of a state. I don't want to have a police force or an army or any of the kind of violence that comes with, with monitoring and maintaining borders. But when I think of that, that 
those times, all of those times when Romani people come together. Um, what I think Romanistan, you know, more than just a feeling or more than just a set of practices that have allowed us to survive even under genocide, you know, even in the, in the threat of genocide, even in the threat of, of violence, of, of racism and discrimination, right? That, that connection that we have is Romanistan. What, what I think it could be is then a celebration of that connection and, and a support of that connection and a recognition of that connection. So we recognize each other when we see each other. We recognize each other through our language. We recognize each other through, through our family kind of, you know, genealogies and histories. But I want us also to think about Romanistan as a mechanism of survival, a practice of resistance, an engagement with love, and a celebration of who we are, of identity, and of our connection with one another. So part of, I think, the way to do some of the work around Romanistan is, is to say it loud and say it proud, right? To claim who we are and to take that and to come together and realize how much we have to be proud of. You know, I mean, how do you keep, you know, without the trappings of the state, without a government, without a kind of written history and history books? And yet, how do you keep the language the culture, the history, right? We've kept that in ways that have maintained the beauty of who we are. And that's something that we should be proud of and we should think about as a practice of resistance. Mm. Um, estimates are, you know, of Romani people in the U.S. range between uh, 1 million and 2 million. We, I mean, and that's part of it. It's very difficult to know, you know, and it, because people don't say but the estimate is somewhere in uh, the one to two million range. And over the history of the U.S. since the very beginning, you know, there were Roma on the Mayflower, right, with, with Columbus. So, so that moment, that kind of the very kind of founding moment of the Americas had Romani people. But Romani people have been on the Mayflower on uh, – did I say – Sorry, they were on the Mayflower, but also as far back as 1492 with Christopher Columbus. So you had, you know, Romani people on the Nina Pinta and Santa Maria. You had Romani people on the Mayflower. You, I mean, and, and always like when you trace that history and then you think, okay, so that was, you know, that was half a millennium ago. You had Romani people in the Americas. And then every wave of migration that has come into the Americas has always included um, a considerable sort of wave of Romani people. And you have Roma from all over Europe. You also had Romani people coming in on the slave ships, you know, as part of the triangular trade, coming from you know, being being kind of transported from uh, England and France and Spain over um you know, to Africa and then to the Americas and, and being, you know, so it's a part of that migration. So you had forced migration, you had, um, uh, voluntary migration, you know, a, another wave of Roma who came over were after liberation from, from slavery in, uh, after the abolition of slavery in what is now Romania, right? In, in Moldova and Wallachia. And so that was the sort of mid 19th century wave of Roma who came. Um, there were waves of forced settlement. And so you've got this kind of large transnational community that's really at once Romani, but also multicultural, multilingual, and, you know, has a number of practices and, and ways of being that they, they bring together. I do. I speak the the uh, the dialect that I grew up speaking. I speak, um, which isn't intelligible to everybody, but yes. And I speak um, some other dialects as well. Um, so I grew up in 
in New Hampshire in a trailer with my parents. Um, and then next door were my grandmother and my uncle. Um, in various parts of where I grew up, uh, you know, we had cousins who like lived around, it was like a small town, like a kind of village, right? But we had cousins kind of all in various places there. So they were, so I, I was, I had extended family. And then when I was, and, and I had, and my, my aunt and my cousin, my aunt, uncle, and my other two cousins lived in another part of New Hampshire. That was my mom's sister, right? So she had a brother and a sister. And they lived about an hour away. But at some point when I was little, probably when I was five, they moved also into the town where we lived. So we all were very close and we, we lived together. And there was probably an extended community within this small town, which the town probably had like 15,000 people, maybe. And I would say there are several hundred of us in this very small space. I mean, in this very small area. So, so that was just kind of our, our extended family within that town. And then, and one of the reasons that my grandfather had brought the family to this town was because it was near uh, a fairground and it, with a racetrack. And my family, uh, bred horses and raced horses. So we had horses and we wanted, I, you know, my, I guess they wanted to be, near where you could kind of care for the horses or people where there was a culture of horses. So, so that was really, um, my, my kind of growing up. But, but I think this question of love really also has to do with the ways in which we were so close. Like as a child, I, you know, I lived with my parents in our trailer, but I was constantly at my grandmother's and uncle's trailer. And I would sleep in both places. And I always felt kind of surrounded by the love of my elders. And then I had that connection with, you know, the, there were many people around me. So, so we knew, and, and, and part of that was cemented by the use of the language. Um, but it was also, I think, cemented because I don't know. I mean, we, we, oh, there was a way in which I was always told, you know, we, we care for each other. This is our culture. We, we take care of each other. If anybody needs anything, you know, that, you know, you can, you can rely on this larger community, which was something that I really felt very safe growing up because I knew not just in my hometown, but also, you know, we had family in Maine over like, this way and family in Massachusetts and, and in particular, then the place that many generations of my family was born in Massachusetts was about an hour away. But again, for me, that's the vision of Romanistan is that you, there are places you can go where you can see other people and be with them and be yourself and flourish and feel secure and feel loved. Non Romani people, definitely. I mean, I guess white, yeah. And, you know, I think again, like I was thinking about this when I was a child, you know, the, the, um, it, you know, it's probably mostly white people, but then I think about kind of what, how we, cause, you know, the word that we would use for ourselves, one of the words that we use for ourselves is, um, kale, right? Black. And we would also use that same word for African Americans. And I think growing up, we also like there was a kind of a feeling of connection, at least for us, right, with the use of that word, like the kind of two uses of what black meant. And um, so, you know, just thinking about kind of the ways in which I guess the kind of precarity that I think about. Um, us living through is also very connected to some of those, those other histories, right? So, you know, um, I'm very matrilineally in my thinking, like my, you know, for me also Romanistan is feminist. So, you know, I think about kind of um, my mother's experiences about being um, forbidden from going to school from the, from 
the non-Romani community in that place in Southern Massachusetts um, because she was gypsy, right? So, so she and her cousins weren't allowed to go and to be part of that school. And so at some point, you know, my mother has had like a, maybe a seventh grade education. You know, she sort of finished seventh grade or finished primary school and then wasn't allowed to go to high school. Um, and then I think about the kinds of the educational precarity. But I do think that Romanistan is a place where women can flourish and, you know, be supported in whatever way, like everybody can, right? Every, all Roma, all genders, um, you know, all kinds of ways of being can be supported in that. And for me, that's a very feminist um, way of understanding. You know, so yes, yeah, so women are central to my world, right? I really, like when I think about how we connect, it is, it's, it's a lot of it is, is through women and among women. Um, but yeah, I would never want to sort of impose a kind of force bearer of culture identity upon Romnia in any way. Yeah, patriarchy is everywhere. We just have to fight back. You know, we have to push back. And I think it's sort of like when, you know, when you talk about that, um, the idea of being proud and of thinking about kind of resistance practices, or I, when I think about that for Romanistan, I also think about that for for women, right? The fact that that strength, that pride, we have to be proud of the fact that we have survived and flourished and supported each other given you know even in the midst of the racism and the patriarchy and the kinds of and the sexism that we face that we really you know we always come through it and and we do that with the support of other women so yes romnia power too right you got romanistan with a strong dose of romnia power I do. No one, you know, I pass for, for Gaji. No one is going to kind of come up to me on the street and say, like, you know, go there or do, you know, there's that kind of violence I'm not going to personally experience except when I'm with my extended family. Um, and, and the way that it really works in the U.S. is at a very kind of local level. So communities where you know in that town, in that village, in that part of the city that you have a high percentage of Romani people, um, you know, Gaje know whom to, they're looking for. They know like the names, they know sort of where people live. And that becomes, I mean, that's really where the kind of, that's how, that's how anti-Romani racism works in the U.S. It's very localized. And it's very much alongside the larger racist frameworks and part of the larger racist frameworks of the U.S. So, so you know, I, I talked about the fact that, you know, um, my family experienced an eviction and an expulsion during my childhood. My mother, you know, was thrown out of school, was not allowed to go to school. Um, we know that across the U.S. there are anti-Roma, what they call anti-Gypsy police forces, like, you know, police that specialize in, you know, quote unquote, Gypsy crime, right? There's a whole, so, so they use the slur, they have specialties and you can, you, know, you can go online and see like, oh, well, here's, you know, here's what you have to do if you find out that there are Roma in your town and, you know, to make sure that you know, they're not, they're, whatever they're doing that, you know, you can report to the police. So, so there are, you know, these pointers of what to look for. So, so there are these deep histories of, of, um, violence against Roma that often go unrecognized. Um, and of course, then the other part of it is, are the stereotypes, right? The, the kind of stereotypes around thievery and begging, but also those kind of Hollywood, the Hollywood stereotypes of hypersexualization and that whole awful kind of, you know, like 
such a passionate people with music and all of these and the color, you know, and all of these. So you've got kind of both sides of that, which are really both sides, the kind of of the same um, racist uh, formation. Right. Just and we're we're told not to talk about it because it can endanger us even more. Right. So that's the other thing is that growing up, I was always told, no, you don't don't talk about it. So if parents, you know, for me, like if parents start to not allow their kids to play with you, it's OK. Just move on. Don't talk about it because it'll just draw more attention to who we are and it'll just draw more, you know, more problems. So just forget about it. Sorry. Just. No. My, you know, you may have thought you were best friends with my daughter, but no, she can't play with you anymore, you know. And so, I mean, I always had my cousins, which was, you know, that was really, you know, to this day, that's what keeps me sane and whole is my is my relationship with my cousins. But no, they would never explain. They just take them away. By the time I got to high school. I mean, the kids would say, you know, there would be these moments and I was a really good student. I, you know, I, I got perfect grades. I, I was very like, you know, a, a very, um, a very strong student. And so I was in all of the kind of upper level classes for everything. And the kids, you know, they would realize, all oh, right, you're that, you're from that community. You're from that group. Oh, the, that's your family. And I remember these moments when, there was one person in particular who'd get all the kids to start saying, gypsy, sit at the back of the class, gypsy, sit at the back of the class. And the teacher would think it was a joke. So, you know, the teachers would just kind of laugh and not do anything. And, um, yeah. So, so there are these things where I think it was, at least for me growing up, it was always unspoken and unsaid. And it was one of the reasons why I was told over and over again, don't tell people who you are, just keep it quiet because you see what happens. They, you know, they treat you badly and they, you could be hurt that way. As I got into high school, I did start to, to talk to people about it, especially at those moments when, you know, I'd be told like, go sit in the back of the class or this or that. But then when I went to university and, um, you know, I was the first person to go to university um, and we were the first generation to, to finish high school actually, but I got to university and I found, I remember kind of when I first, I loved that library and I would spend a lot of time in my university library. And uh, I found the section on Roma. Like there was a tiny little section, like, you know, if you think about like my bookshelf, like that bookshelf back there that you can see, like that tiny little section in this big library on Roma. And I must have, I checked out like all of the books and I brought them back to my room and I couldn't believe there are actually books about us. Right. I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And then I remember bringing them home during holidays and trying to show my family. And, um, and it was then that I, I mean, I, even, I guess when I went to university and I was away from my family for the first time, I did tell, like I told people. Because it was that moment, like, it was back when I was, like, seven years old, and the kids would all say, so, what, where's your family from, you know? And some people would say, well, I'm Hungarian-American, or I'm Italian-American, or I'm, you know, Canadian. Like, and I'd be like, I'm Romani. And they'd be like, okay. They, you know, they just, so, so with this whole moment, I think I was kind of back at like this new space where there were new people and I did start telling people and I did have these books that I was reading and thinking, oh, wow, well, okay, that's what this is. Of course, all the books are written by Gajay, but at that point, except for Ian Hancock's, Ian Hancock's books were not, but, but the rest of them were written by Gajay. But I really was like, wow, there are books about us. So there you go. No. I think there was a lot of kind of exoticization um, and people would be like, Oh, that's so interesting. That's very cool. Right. But part of it was also because I was really only most of my friends were stu other, you know, students of color in the university, like, so, you know, black and Latinx and um, Asian American students. I mean, we, we sort of formed this, this group because we were, you know, we were such, a, we were all minorities, um, 
within the university setting. So it would be like the, the students of color, the queer kids, like the kind of other marginalized kids, we'd all kind of bond together. So no, no one, no one, you know, treated me badly because of that. Um, the only thing that did happen, I remember when I was in my second year, some of my friends came back and said, oh my gosh, there's another, there's a Roma on, on campus. Like you need to go find him. Like there's a Roma. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Cause I was always, you know, I was the only one. So then, uh, I found like I went around, I finally found him, um, Somehow I ran into him. I was like, oh, you're the person I've been looking for. And I was like, Sarsan. Like, and I kind of, you know, I, I, I spoke to him in Romani and he looked at me really confused. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I was like, I heard though, like, you're Rome. And, and, and he's like, uh, I'm a witch. And I go, huh? And then I noticed he had like a cape, right? And he had like a little pouch. I don't know. And he goes, you know, I'm a witch. Like I'm a wizard. And I go, okay, are you, but I heard that you were, you were Romani. And he goes, I don't even know. What is that? And I said, ah, never mind. And he goes, um, and he's like, oh, do you mean gypsy? And I go, mm, yeah, um, yeah. He goes, yeah, no, I'm a witch. So yeah, of course I'm a gypsy. And I was like, oh, you know, and, and, um, it was such a letdown because I really thought, wow, you know, I, I found this thing and it was, I was going to have like someone, you know, a cousin like on campus, but it, it didn't happen. Um, you know, we were friends after and I realized like, you know, he was, um, he was queer and he was Puerto Rican and he was, an, you know, a first generation college student like me. And I think he thought that his kind of shaping of identity would really be kind of, you know, a way of getting away from other abject identities by taking on this other kind of abject identity. I think for me personally, uh, when God J say the word, I'm offended. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a slur and it shouldn't be. Yeah. And, um, when we say the word, it's fine, but that's about, you know, who owns the word. It's, it's always, it's always been a word that's been given to us and placed upon us by the outside and taking back the word for ourselves. Um, but I think, you know, in a lot of ways, right, the ways in which kind of in the U.S. as in Europe, we're always known by the slur. We're always, you know, it's always, you know, the G word as insult when used on by outsiders. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the ways in which like the racist history of that is very central. I think it, you know, it, it's everywhere. And, and it's always, it's always, I think a way that needs to be combated at every turn, you know, that, cause it's not just, you know, people, it's not just you or, or I or the person, you know, across the street or, you know, down the road or, or the neighbor, but, but it's the state, you know, the ways in which the state, the nation state reinforces the, the the exclusion and the marginalization and the racialized regimes that keep and re, and I guess maintain the the G word maintain the word gypsy as both acceptable to the outside world and and also a kind of abject racialized subject. Yeah, I mean, I think it's you know it's true, I, but you know, we know that everyone will only be liberated and everyone will o only be secure and safe when the most marginalized of us are secure and safe and liberated. And in that way, right, you kind of think, Oh, part of our job, everyone's job. Right. And that means, that means Gajay, 
um, people. It means white people who are trying to work to end racist oppression, to end patriarchy, to end um, homophobia, to end Islamophobia, like all of that work that people do. If they're doing that work in good faith, then I think it's, a, it's you know, it's imperative for all of us to, to work together to make the world a possibility for everybody. And that includes like anti-capitalist work, right? You know, anti-inequality work, you know, when people, you know, want to say like, actually, you know, wealth is a problem. We need to like redistribute like that stuff also has to be done to fight homophobia, to fight transphobia, to fight patriarchy and sexism, to fight racism and just make it possible for everybody to flourish. That's really what our job is. And if, you know, whoever, wherever anybody comes from, whichever community, you know, there's a difference, you know, where you can belong to your community, but renounce whiteness, renounce patriarchy, you know, renounce kind of racism, renounce all of these oppressive systems that have really kept us down and kept us oppressed. The first, first things that come to my mind is an utopia. Romanistan is a place that doesn't exist, but it, it can be built in an imaginary manner, like through cultural links between the Romani people conceived as a diaspora in different European countries and beyond Europe. So Romanistan is more um, a network, it's, it's more um, a bunch of personal and collective links between different communities rather than a place. It, it would be a sense of belonging to a group of people that identify themselves as belonging to the Romani community. So wherever you go and you find this community, this would be the, the Romanistan. And it's certainly a transnational community that you can relate to and, and to share certain values, but also uh, certain um, views on, 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 how to, on how to live a life. So first of, first of all is the recognition of one own history. So it's the history of a particular people in the world that it has been persecuted, but that has survived to many attempts of extermination. So this already gives the Romani people a conception of the self, who we are. But beyond that, there is also some commonalities related to culture, for example, music, then also language, also certain conception of family and how we relate with, with our own relatives. And are also certain conception of nature and our relation to some traditional job, always related to animals, for example. These are small things that you will find in different Romani communities around the world. As far as I know, it's, it's, it's not that a community is ruled by, by a leader, but each community, they have their own uh, way of life. Yeah, and different traditions, different professions, and, and there is no, the particularity of the Roma is that there, there is no one center of power, neither the state nor a private organization that could rule the Romani uh, transnational uh, people. It's, 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 it's quite, it's quite anarchist in this way. There is no one leading the community. It's a community of life. There is one thing among, among the Roma communities that it, there is a pre-assumption of, uh, of confidence. So whenever you go and there is a Roma person or a Roma community, uh, in principle, you will trust that person or that community because there is a sense of belonging that 
it's always there than somehow. So we, we, we have to take that in, into consideration. So from there, to communicate with, with different people in different countries is quite easy. My, my role would be just to facilitate the connections between different uh, peoples and different projects and different, um, how can I say, different curiosities. For example, if a Romani person from Barcelona text me in WhatsApp and ask me, I want to go to London or I want to go to Paris, I want to go to Budapest and want to meet with some Romani communities or Romani people, I would make that, that connection because of my, my background, traveling to different countries, connecting because of my activist work and now my, my political work, my social capital is quite wide. So how can I imagine it's like different Romani people from different countries can, can go to the different Romani communities and, and they can m make a, an exchange of, of cultural activities, for example, or educational activities. Or why not political activities in the sense of def the defense of uh, fundamental rights that are being denied right now. So I would be very happy if in 20 years I can see how my Hungarian brother and sisters or my French brother and sisters can come to Spain, to Barcelona, Granada, Madrid, and they can exchange activities, educational, cultural, political activities with the other Roma or even the Romani people from Colombia, Mexico, Argentina can do the same with European countries. So if, if we can indeed like to, to feed this network with new people, new ideas, new activities, that would be amazing. That, that is like the, it would mean that the, the Romanistan is, is really alive and is developing. Indeed, when we made this um, project that is, it calls uh, a Europe of Diaspora, it is an app. It is not a, a mobile app, but it is a digital app that you can go there, you can click in a map, and then you will see how there are Romani communities in, Czech, in certain cities of Czech Republic and certain neighborhoods in Spain and all over Europe. We have started five years ago. Somehow this project stopped, but it can be recovered, so, and it can be transformed in a mobile app. So if, if I may add to add something, is that even digital um, tools and the digital society, that it is more than a tool because it's in the end people connecting to each other and, and elaborating uh, projects together, uh, we cannot reduce the, the, the Romanistan to, to the digital society. So we need to feed uh, the, the digital society with, with physical people and physical communities and in the end to protect them. Uh, otherwise, a digital project can look very nice, but then in the end, you have to see how it is impacting people. And mm. I think this is a, ca a caution that we should look at. No, I don't, I don't think so. What is needed is the, the participation of Romani people in political structures, like LGBT movements or other minorities are using political structures to participate in, in, in center of powers. Or otherwise, we will exclude ourselves. I mean, there, there are many, there are many, motivations in history that they claim sometimes because they say genetic we are inferior genetically they can say that and they said in the past others said we are not uh, religious enough others can say we we don't we don't work too much yeah we are lazy or they will have any excuse to discriminate but in the end it's, it's a unconscious bias Especially in Spain, there is a very, very, very much mixed country. 
with the Arab people, with Jewish people, a lot with the Sephardi minority in Spain, with the Romani people as well. There is a lot of um, hybridation, hybrid identities in Spain, but they don't recognize that. Now, for me, Romanistan is the the virtual place where we keep our identity, our feelings about our being Roma, uh, our struggles, and um, our pain, and our hope for the future. In different moments of my life, it was another thing, but uh, in this moment is exactly that what I said to you. It is something, it is the place inside of us that, that we share, you know, the place inside of us that we share. So every time I meet Roma, people, whatever, wherever, in the camps in Italy or in the high level uh, events in Berlin, I, I feel I am in Romanistan. Because we are in 20th century, and uh, I think uh, 21st century, you know, like uh, we are in the future now, and uh, the borders and the countries are something that I hope belongs to the other world and to the past. So I think the issue, the fact that we don't have the country and we are the nation, is making us. Uh, very, very uh, alternative, future, <laughs> representative people. And I think about uh, moral and spiritual suffering that is uh, inside of our DNA for generations. And this is um, continuous attack on our dignity, on our self-esteem and on our idea on who we are. So that's, I mean, as a suffering <laughs> nowadays, uh, Roma suffering. Romanistan can be, and it is, the place for us <clears throat> of saving our dignity and channeling our anger for positive changes. Otherwise, if we would not have had the idea of Romanistan, uh, we, the only thing can, can remain to us can be or suffer, but also anger and shame or shame. So, of course, the idea of Romanistan and creating the Romanistan inside of you is not only makes you survive and defend yourself from this, you know, attacks of dignity on your dignity and self-esteem, but also channeling the, the anger that is really huge. So I think the, what we can do is to create Romanistan first inside of ourselves and then inside of the others to find a place, safe place and dignity place where they can be what they are and exprime themselves, at least among uh, friends, right? <laughs> I'm an activist, I, I try to channel uh, the anger through the political struggle and mobilizing people to struggle with me. And uh, now this is the way, of course, in, in our lives, all of us, we pass through different phases of, of uh, reacting on anger. And believe me, I think it is very good because white, Western, you know, 
democratic people need this to, to understand their contradictions and hypocrisies. Okay. So I don't know if uh, the reaction is to def some probably defend themselves, some probably uh, understand and whatever. But I think it is necessary that one part, especially though this part on artistic level, is and have to be so strong to hit this aspects. I mean, uh, to to take off the masks. From the people. So, and then, of course, the other part, which is uh, the part of the mediation, the rational level, negotiation, somehow it has to be different. But this is the only space that we have to take off <laughs> all our tougher or our emotions. So, uh what Roman Stan can be is an idea, an idea of a, a safe space for Roma, yeah, uh, uh, where, you know, you, um, you have your own safe space in a way uh, where you can withdraw from this all the shit that you get in the society. Yeah. Now, to put it nicely, um, is in Romanistan is the safe space as a way to compensate for all the um, hardship and oppression Roma are getting in different societies where they live. So that becomes purely a space of, in our minds. For me, Romanistan is um, the vision of the first transnational movement or the first transnational or global nation. The nation concept is very uh, old or old fashioned in my, in my terms. I think borders, geographical borders are really so yesterday. Um, and I think Romani people are very progressive in these terms. I think we have the potential to be the first really uh, super transnational uh, community acting in completely different ways. So for me, Romanistan is not necessarily tied to a geographical space or nation in that sense. But for me, Romanistan is a spirit. It's an international movement. And people who belong to it, they know that they are part of it. Well, I would say uh, in the first sentence that it's not different from any other community, like let's say the Germans or the Austrians. Uh, it's the same grade of being diverse. We don't have one religion in this Romanistan. We have a lot of religions. We don't have one political direction. We have a lot of political directions, which is very important for me because in politics, uh, often they say Romani people should have one opinion about something and we should be unified about something. But I think that's just bullshit because in democracy, uh, it's beautiful that we can have a lot of opinions inside a community and nobody ever would demand from Austrians or Germans to be just to have just one opinion or to have just one party. So I think we should stop demanding that from uh, any minority of any kind. And for me in Romanistan, we have a lot of religions, a lot of opinions, a lot of parties in the sense of mindsets, a lot of generations. Um, well, yes, I wouldn't say that Romanistan is any different from any other uh, normal uh, or average uh, nation. Maybe the history is something that is different, but the history is different in every country. Well, um, as I said, as, as we cannot have just one direction or ju just one political uh, direction, uh, I think this is a very diverse thing. I think there, it, it consists of many different groups. 
who represent different directions. This means uh, we have very conservative groups and we also have very progressive uh, groups inside Romanistan and they have different agendas, they have different targets, they have different visions of where to go to. Uh, and I think uh, that's uh, that's very fine. And um, at this point, in reality, it's quite informal, but I think it's uh, the main point where we connect is actually online. It's online, it's in many different discussion groups, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, it's on Messenger, it's on uh, WhatsApp. Um, so through the digital lines, it becomes a very uh, real and very feasible thing, Romanistan. And um, I think it's very special that uh, the communities in Romanistan, whatever groups, um, it goes beyond the national context. So I think I'm also kind of like a kind of like a lobbyist or ambassador position also. Um, so this is the reason why we definitely need also non-Roma scientists, non-Roma friends. We need allies. So we need allies. So I would say yes, for sure. I'm a Romani. A Romanistan should be led by Roma and Sinti in the driving positions. But this leader should be intelligent enough. Uh, to have advisors and experts in the team who help them to develop the visions in a, in a, in a very uh, efficient and effective way. Just being Roma or Sinti by ethnicity doesn't make you any expert or any competent, more competent than uh, any other person. Um, this would be a racist approach, and I'm completely against any racist approach. But I think um, Romani people should lead this kind of Romanistan, and they should be intelligent enough to have a lot of allies who are not Roma and Sinti, who have a lot of knowledge, and maybe who are in the right positions also to finance, to put more money into the things we Also, I think Romanistan is a ein Begriff, was sich erstmal sehr exotisch anhört. Ja, ein fremde Land, ein bisschen orientalisch. Wenn wir Mitte von Europa leben, ja. Also mir als Ungar oder mir als Deutsche klingt das sehr exotisch erstmal. Romanistan, Kirgistan, Usbekistan, ich weiß nicht. Ich habe eine Vorstellung von diesen Ländern, ja. Sehr häufig eine, hochwahrscheinlich eine sehr, wie kann man das schön formulieren, stereotypisierende Vorstellung, ja, mit Pferde, mit schönen Landschaften. Und gerade das ist auch mein erstes Problem. Ja, Romanistan ist natürlich nicht das. Ja, ich, ich würde davon abraten, diese exotische, romantisierende Vorstellung darüber zu haben, dass man dort frei ist, dass da nur Pferde auf dem Wiese da laufen und da darf man alles machen. Nein, Romanistan ist für mich hochpolitisch. Ja, Romanistan ist eine 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 lange Kampf ja für der Bürgerrechte für Sinti und Roma in Europa. Ja, eine lange Wunsch, was nach dem Krieg, nach dem Holocaust viele Überlebende nicht mehr erhalten haben. Eine lange Wunsch für Freiheit, Gleichberechtigung als Frau, als Mann, als Angehörige der Minderheit. Und, und ich denke, so muss man das auch verstehen. Das ist ein politischer Begriff für mich. Ja, das hängt damit zusammen, wie wir Sinti und Roma in der Gesellschaft wahrgenommen werden. Bin ich eine gleichberechtigte Mitbürger oder Mitbürgerin? Darf ich mitsprechen auch bei Thematiken, was nicht mit Sinti und Roma zu tun haben? Darf ich als Arch Architekt, ja, darf ich als, als Handwerker teilnehmen in der gesellschaftlichen Leben, ohne dass jemand mich sofort nach meiner Herkunft fragt, ob ich Sinti oder Roma bin? Weil in diesem Moment schließt sich eigentlich die Grenzen von der sogenannten Romanistan, aber eigentlich von der Demokratie. Ja? Es schließt sich der Demokratie für mich, weil ich werde ganze Zeit wegen meiner Ethnie, wegen meiner Herkunft, auch wenn positiv das klingt, aber es ist auch trotzdem eine Stigmatisierung. Aber Romanistan ist für mich keine territoriale Land. Also es ist keine physische 
ein physischer Ort, wo jetzt Sinti und Roma, davor würde ich auch wirklich abraten von diesen Gedanken, wo zwölf Millionen Sinti und Roma jetzt äh, eventuell hinsiedeln würden und eine neue Staat gründen. Das ist unmöglich. Unsere Kultur und Geschichte ist so weit mit dem, mit Europa, mit Deutschland, mit dem Länder ver, verflochten, zusammen, hängt zusammen, dass ich kann wirklich nicht nur behaupten, sondern ich kann das auch sagen, dass der deutsche Demokratie wurde von der deutschen Bürgerrechtsbewegung, der Sinti und Roma mitbewegt, mitgegründet, gestärkt. Wir gehören zu Europa, wir gehören zu Ungarn, zu Deutschland, zu Frankreich. Die Geschichte ist unsere Geschichte von den Nationen. Wir haben das mit aufgebaut, wir haben mitgekämpft, 56 in Ungarn. Wir waren bei den Studentenbewegungen in Deutschland dabei, ja, als Sinti und Roma. Wir waren in Prag bei der Revolution dabei, im Prager Frühling. Und diese Geschichte in Europa ist auch unsere Geschichte. Ja, das ist nicht eine Parallelwelt, nicht eine sogenannte Subkultur, sondern unsere Kultur ist und gehört zu der europäischen Kultur. Ja, und das ist eigentlich, wieder zurück ein bisschen zu Romanistan, Europa ist auch äh, eigentlich Romanistan. Ja, das ist einfach zusammen, wenn man das so verstehen möchte. Das kann man auch nicht trennen. Europa braucht wirklich äh, jetzt ein neues Konzept zu der Demokratie, <lacht> eine neue Vorstellung. Brüssel braucht das auch sehr dringend. Ja, eine, eine ganz neue Konzept, neue Vorstellung, eine neue Idea, Idea, eine ideal, ideale Vorstellung von dieser Demokratie. Und dabei sollte natürlich Sinti und Roma eine wichtige Rolle spielen, wie auch andere Minderheiten, aber nicht nicht als als äh, exotische Beispiele. Mein Ziel ist, diese ideale Welt zu erreichen, wo Rassismus nicht mehr auf der Agenda steht. Ja? Wo Antisemitismus nicht mehr an, an der Agenda steht, wo Anti, Antiziganismus nicht mehr auf der Agenda steht. Ja? So muss ich meine Entscheidungen treffen. Und in diesem Moment und deswegen meine ich auch, ist Romanistan für mich in Brüssel. Ja? Romanistan ist in der ungarischen Parlament, ja? bei Fidesz, bei dem anderen Partei. Romanistan ist bei der neuen Generation, die hoffentlich politisch und kritisch denken, ja? nachdenken und handeln werden. Was ist eigentlich unsere freie Demokratie? Ja, was bedeutet das für mich? Ja, dürfen Sinti und Roma da mitsprechen? Dürfen Frauen da mitsprechen? Ja, oder ist das äh, nur für Männer etwas? Ja, ich spitze das an, bewusst. Ja, und, 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 ich, und ich denke, dass dieser Begriff muss man wirklich so verstehen. Ja, also Romanistan ist Brüssel, der ungarische Parlament, der, der deutsche Bundestag. Ja, das ist in der USA. Ja. Weil bei unserer Globus ist einfach in diesem Sinne zu klein. Ja? Das ist äh, einfach eine Rassismus ist ein teilweise eine Krankheit, was wir gemeinsam lösen müssen. Ja? Und die Demokratie ist eine, eine wirklich eine, eine der wichtigsten eine wicht, wichtigste Errungenschaft in unserer, in unserer Welt, was wir schützen müssen. Also da dafür müssen wir kämpfen. Jede Generation muss immer wieder neu lernen. Das Demokratie war, war nicht geschenkt. Wir hatten Sklaverei gehabt ja, in der Welt. Wir hatten äh, unterschiedliche Unterdrückungen erlebt. Ja. Königreichen, Monarchien. Monarchien ja. Diese Freiheit, was wir heute als selbstverständlich erleben, ja, das ist zerbrechlich. Ja, das, das, ist, das war nicht gegeben. Das haben unsere Vorfahren für uns erkämpft. Ja, in den Kriegen. Ja, sie versuchen das heute noch, noch immer, immer wieder klar zu machen. Wenn wir weiterhin egoistisch bleiben, wenn wir weiterhin unsere Intelligenz 
nicht gegenüber unserem Egoismus setzen, ja, dann werden wir nicht äh, den Demokratie und unseren Rechtsstaat aufenthalten auf können. Dann kommt es wieder zu, zu, ähm, ja, zu Regime, zu Einschränkungen, zu unterschiedlichen äh, Einschränkungen von Meinungsfreiheit. Und deswegen denke ich, Romanistan ist ein sehr wichtiger äh, Beispiel für unsere für unsere äh, europäische Parlament, die dafür kämpfen, dass wir in unterschiedliche Länder in Europa, in Ungarn, in Deutschland, Frankreich, die gemeinsame Werte, humanistische Werte haben. Ja? Und man muss immer wieder darauf hinweisen. Ja? Und darunter verstehe ich auch uns, Sinti und Oma. Also wir, wir sind Beispiele dafür. Ja? Also natürlich sind wir die Beispiele mit 500.000 in dem Holocaust ermordete europäische Sinti und Roma. Ja, wie auch die Juden mit sechs, sechs Millionen äh, Menschen, die in, in der Holocaust ermordet wurden. Ja. Aber in erster, in erster Reihe geht es um die Erinnerungskultur. Unsere Sprache allgemein muss unsere Demokratie, demokratische Gedanken auch unterstützen. Ja, das bedeutet, ich darf mich nicht rassistisch deuten oder es darf auch nicht so anhören. Und wenn ich zum Beispiel das Wort, was wir auch vermeiden möchten mittlerweile und immer in Einführungszeichen steht, einige möchten das ganz weg oder nur als Z geschrieben haben in Einführungszeichen. Wenn ich dieser Wort, ich sage das mal aus, Zigeuner benutze, in bestimmte Kontexte, was nicht historisch ist, sondern in Kontexte, was rassistisch und antiziganistisch ist, ja, als Beschimpfung, ja, dann ist dieser Begriff äh, äh, eine rassistische, äh, eine rassistische Angriff an mich, an an der äh, äh, an der Sinti und Roma, aber eigentlich viel mehr an unsere Demokratie. dann haben wir wirklich ein sehr, sehr großes Problem. Und dann wird auch unsere, unsere äh, äh, Begrifflichkeiten ja, nicht friedlich sein. Aber ich warne davon wirklich, es darf nicht dazu führen, ja, dass der Sprache äh, diese, dieser Rassismus unterstützt, dass, dass der Sprache wieder dazu führt, dass wir nicht eine, eine intelligente, eine, eine politische äh, Debatte führen. Ja, diese Debatte gegenüber Ausgrenzung, äh, Gewalt gegenüber Sinti und Roma, diese rassistische Gewalt, darf nicht, äh, darf nicht äh, äh, in einen Gegenrassismus äh, führen. Ja. Und damit habe ich wahrscheinlich eine Sache jetzt äh, angesprochen, was sehr, sehr, sehr intensiv ist, weil, weil, ähm, weil ich denke, viele von unseren Menschen sind davon betroffen, in dem Schule, von Kleinkind bis Erwachsene, ja. Und das habe ich vorher auch als alltäglicher Rassismus genannt, ja, wo man alltäglich wegen seiner Herkunft ausgegrenzt wird, ja. Und, und, äh, und das muss Politik begreifen. Ja, diese Wort, dieser Wort ist deswegen noch immer lebendig, weil dieser alltägliche Rassismus, Ausgrenzung noch immer lebendig ist. Ja, und das kann nur weg, weg sein, wenn, wenn Politik, Gesellschaft, auch Lokalpolitik, aber auch Presse und so weiter, die Medien sich darum kümmern, dass, dass Sinti und Roma als gleichberechtigte Bürger und Bürgerinnen ja, dargestellt werden. Dass man das nicht mehr immer wieder, immer wieder von vorne beginnt. Weil, wie gesagt, Rassismus ist eine Krankheit. Davon wird jede krank. I mean, Romanistan for me predominantly is a metaphor of a state of mind, the mentality and an attitude, and in a more, uh, maybe more radical, um, approach, it's a dreamland, it's kind of an utopia that I don't think any Roma really strives for physically, 
um, in the sense of having Romanistan as a state, but is a utopia, an idea that uh, is somehow motivating us. And it's, it's somehow a vision of a future that mm, we would like to see one day. We are inseparable from the history of Europe. We have been excluded um, from the, the kind of the, the narrative of history, but also from the places where, you, where we are. So um, all the persecutions and the different types of discrimination that we faced through centuries made us also feel not welcome. So we, even though we are de facto part of Europe, you know, and the world, we are never made feel. feel, feel we are not being uh, made feel like this. You know, so that we are part, so we are excluded. And I think this, um, the ideal of a Romanistan is this reaction to the rejection that we face from the majority society among where we live. So um, there has been some attempts, you know, of also trying to connect this to a territory. So if the majority, the gadget world doesn't want us, they hate us and they put us through so much suffering, and so much injustice, let's just forget about the gadget world and create our own, right? So in this more extreme or radical approach, there have been attempts uh, in, in political um, or discursive ways of trying to say we deserve our place. You know, we should have our own land where we can self-govern. So I've traveled through many countries, um, me as this kind of young Romney, you know, um, doing my interviews with different Roma people, different communities. and they would always look at me like, you're kind of a strange little creature, you know, traveling by yourself, doing research, you know, and, but they would always recognize me as a Roma as well. And they would treat me as a family. And this hospitality, this generosity and the feeling of, of closeness would always be there. And for me, this is something extremely unique. I don't feel this when I travel around the world as a Polish person and, you know, I meet other Polish people and I don't have this feeling with them. I have it when I when I meet other Roma. So that's why I think for me the Romanistan is this feeling of of just being together, some somehow this humane, uh, you know, universal connection um, that that brings us together somehow. Well, I think it's a, it's a family assembly for me, and family being understood as something um, as something that not that not necessarily require blood connection you know it's just the the feeling of of warmth and hospitality and the feeling of um just uh, you know kind of um experiences that are encoded into our dna through the families and through the centuries of our ancestors that we bring together which both um have a lot of negative you know uh, emotions in the sense of struggle of pain of fear of discrimination and at the same time there is the feeling of resistance, of resilience, of strength, of kind of the pride against all odds. And this is something that I think has been passed from generation to generation, and it's encoded into our DNA. So um, when we meet each other and we have these, these moments of assembly, and whether it's as small as a few people, whether it's really large, like, you know, it's a huge festival or it's a, a big meeting or, um, you know, something like this, there is this recognition of this DNA kinship and of these, both of these experiences encoded into us. On one hand of this negative um, elements that you know, we've been through as a community and also of these, these positive things that we resisted, that we survived and we overcame and we're still here. Polish context is different. If you would see like, uh, you know, my, my pictures from the school, all the kids are blonde and blue eyes and I'm the only dark skin black hair person and it's completely visible and actually when i was growing up i would have names like puerto rico you know or people would call me names that were not necessarily insults but they would somehow already highlight that i'm kind of different and i would always take it as something extremely cool i thought that you guys are the most boring ever because you know you all look the same and i have such a cool family story you know and i kind of grew up with this sense of, of pride and coolness with my identity which is i think might be somehow unique and it's and it's special. So yes, you are a Roma. And then the you know the, the openness and the generosity and the support that you get, you know, it's it's unlike anything else, you know. So I don't know. I think it's it's really cool that you have to enter somehow and perform your identity towards them as well. 
just to make make them understand that we are just so diverse. And then we can very critically assess the way the majority, you know, projects and talks about us. And of course, that they have the, man, the dominant voice, right? They have the spaces, they have the infrastructure, they have the media. So the images about us are not shaped by us. So it requires a lot of, um, I think, uh, a lot of strength and and uh, and the conscious process of self liberation, you know, of self emancipation, in saying, "Well, this is not true. This is who we are. This is who I am." You know, let me show you. So I think this is already happening, and uh, in uh, I may say so, Roma elites or some structures of people who are um, working, you know, in in things that are related to their identity. This concept is very clear, but even in those communities who are more impoverished or, you know, are, um, have less opportunities or less privileges as, as people like me. You know, I think that even there intuitively, there is this very core disagreement with this is what they say about us. So, so I think Romanistan in the sense refers to this feeling and this kind of disagreement, you know, and somehow searching for pride and value and self affirmation of yourself. Roma in this Latin American or European con- or uh, American context, they're European, right? Their origin is European. And for them, it's much easier to actually hide their identity behind their national identity. So many of them, when you are meeting them, they say, oh, I'm Bulgarian. I'm Macedonian. You know, I'm Greek. I'm Romanian. They don't say I'm a Roma. You know that because you know how to recognize them and you know the language they speak. You mean Roma, you say Hungaros, because that's how they name themselves, because that's how they hid their identity, because many of them, there was a huge wave of migration in late 19th century from, uh, you know, after the 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 Austrian Hungarian uh, territories that traveled to Latin America. And when they met, they would say, or in the immigration cars, they would say, we're Hungaros, we're Hungarians. You know, so they already tried to encode this kind of hiding of identity towards the majority to escape the, the same prejudice and the same discrimination that they lived in in Europe and that migrated with the Europeans to the Latin America. So it's, it's a very curious process because in Latin American case, they are very conservative and traditional. They conserve much more of the traditions that I remember my father telling me about, but I've never lived them. They still live them. You know, there is, it's a very kind of tightly knit community that still lives much closely the kind of um, traditional um, rituals or values that, you know, I, I recall from books, but I don't know them from my own life. Um, but at the same time, towards the majority, they say, no, 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 I'm Bulgarian. No, I'm Romanian. So um, they still experience this level of discrimination. And you can see this very much also in the media. One of these conclusions about him um, researching what are the stereotypes of the Gajo people in the Roma society really articulated very well um, the long the legacy of the relationship of the unequal and abusive relationship of the ma- non-Roma majority towards the Roma community. So many of the stereotypes actually reflect that because they say you cannot trust the Gajo people, you cannot be completely you know open with them because you cannot like tell them your IDs you know, your, your information about your family, because they, these information would always be abused by the authorities or by non-Roma people. So that many of the stereotypes would be that they are aggressive, you know, that they are uh, violent, you know, and uh, these stereotypes that were shaped, um, you know, they re- really reflect the way the, the majority abused and, and you know, uh, oppressed or created a lot of pain and suffering towards the Roma. You have can have a promotion in the universe of the Roma when you're a gadget person. That's really a good person that has been kind, or it's almost like family, you know, or that is really very close friend. And then it's a it's a manush, amaro manush, you know, it's our our a manush, manusha is a person. So from a gadget you have a person, and then you have a Roma, you know, that that's how the hierarchy goes. I mean, it's if, if you're interpreted literally, but I think it also shows that the gadget are. Hmm, People that are far away from us that many of us don't know because the relationships are very far. If you have a gadget person that's a, a person that you know that you have a good relationship with, then it's a manush, it's a human being that's a non-Roma, 
but it's a human being like you. It's like, it's like very close. There is also, I think, even somehow unco- subconsciously, but encoded in the language, you know, that shows that there are non-Roma people that have been kind and close and they've been really good friends. And, you know, and there's, of course, such a number of intermixed marriages and, you know, and businesses or families done across this ethnicity. So I don't know. I think it's also very nice to show that there is, you know, this gradual kind of getting closer. When I say gadget, I never mean anything bad. But uh-huh. I understand that there are people who do. I'm thinking about our belonging, our um, our common goals, the cause of our people being together and being equal with uh, majorities. It is our struggle and cultural history. It is our knowledge um, that we have gathered for hundreds of years without infrastructure printing, without books, without uh, without the infrastructure of spaces. We were able to gather and transfer from generation to generation. So everyone who who has our identity is a Romanistan. I think when we think about safe havens, so where are the safe havens currently in Europe? Really, there are many governments that are drifting to right and far right. There are neo-Nazi forces threatening uh, in different locations around Europe. There is uh, uh, governments, you know, Le Pen, Orban. Uh, there are governments that are outspokenly, blatantly racist and anti-Roma. So for me, knowing, for example, that there is in Shutka, Macedonia, a community and a territory of 30,000 Roma people, that's a safe haven. Knowing that when I go to the outskirts of Sevilla, Poligono del Sur, there are 50,000 Roma people there. That's a force. And uh, we don't have to draw the map and color the edges red, you know, for me to know. That's our territory. Uh, national um, national identities are completely outdated. I mean, uh, what are we doing uh, considering these maps? Uh, you know, here is this global crisis, for example, of the pandemic, you know, like really we are making national regulations, assuming that the virus does not cross national borders. Like it's just simply not going to transmit because there is a border there. I and and also not just in the case of the pandemic, but in any political crisis, human humanitarian crisis, you no know, uh, refugee crisis, global economic crisis. We cannot uh, separate these issues into small territorial, homogeneous or self-claimingly homogeneous little groups. There is no question today that we are entangled and one on this planet. And, uh, and the future of the planet really needs radical solutions. And the radical solution, for example, is Romanistan. We need the idea of a political uh, global Romanistan that connects people uh, to an idea of a radical state which does not have territorial claims but has significant political claims and embodies not an utopia, but a correction of what Europe is doing today. We need, we need political, economic, cultural solutions to this outdated mechanism of national structures. Uh, yes, it's a constitution for democracy, for the equality, uh, of humans uh, within Romanistan, it would have principles, uh, democratic principles, uh, such as uh, the mobility and freedom of people, the freedom of expression. And Romanistan also would have a specific, Romanistan specific uh, um, uh, constitutional laws. You know, the recognition of uh, of women in leadership is absolutely something that Romanistan has already in its constitution. And also, uh, you know,
know, it's important to say that uh, uh, the freedom of movement within Romanistan, you know, is a birthright. And um, and also uh, the passport of Romanistan should be recognized, you know, as a, uh, you know, together with the history of Romanistan, which is the uh, only neutral uh, state, really, in the history of Europe, or one of the only neutral states in the history of Europe. It's the most peaceful, actually, the most peaceful nation that we have in Europe in the past 1,000 years. So I believe that, you know, when you're crossing borders and there's a diplomatic lane, Roma Romanistan citizens should be able to pass there because we never had any, um, you know, uh, attacks. Uh, we were never involved in any historical crisis. We were never in any of the European wars. And we certainly... Uh, are managing and transferring knowledges across borders, ensuring that European values are kept, embodying the ideas of what Europe is. So based on these uh, facts, I really think that we should have uh, some kind of recognition of all states of this diplomatic force. We will be invisible because uh, racism operates in a way that uh, you know, majority society's members would have to eventually give up privileges in order for providing for the invisible and underrepresented minorities. Now, there is a lot of discussion and reflection on racism, and there's a lot of recognition and critique of different ways of structural racism, but until actually white people give up privileges and this reallocation of resources happens, we have to remain conscious that this is going to be uh, an oppressed culture that is going to have less visibility for majority society. Uh, I think uh, women in general uh, are more integrative uh, when it comes to politics. Uh, and uh, and uh, we cannot blame men for this. It's not like this is um, this is an accusation. Uh, it is important to say that uh, men have grown up in patriarchy, uh, and we all grown up in patriarchy. So competition, thinking in dualistic ways, thinking in uh, contrast and conflict uh, and competition are very much the education of patriarchy. So it is completely natural that we, when we think about a new humanity and how to dismantle patriarchy, we think about those who have achieved a lot in this regard, and those are women and feminist women who really have created theories and policies on how to change the world for the better, how to introduce quotas, how to introduce equality in our public sphere, in lives, in our payments, and so on. So I think this is uh, of utmost importance. A good cultural minister in Romanistan. I would love to be a public servant for sure. Have enough contacts to the other cultural ministers of Europe you know, to really ensure good diplomatics and good cultural diplomatics for our country. And also, you know, I, I can really see how we could work together with other countries, but also with other ministers in my Romanistan uh, to make sure that we ensure a new generation of brilliant Roma artists and intellectuals and scholars who can thrive for Romanistan's future. So I think it's time that the that the founders of Romanistan come together. I mean, Romanistan exists, it's no question. But it's important to have a public meeting of all the founders. It is time to issue passports. We have some administrative tasks to do around this. <laughs> I, I mean, I giggle now, but this is really super important. It's important to come together and pronounce Romanistan because it's in our thoughts in our work and it embodies in everything that we do.
we are connected already transnationally and we speak Romanistan and we work Romanistan and we produce it with everything that we do. So I think uh, it's important uh, we perform to perform it. You know, when you it's a performative act that we say that we put Romanistan on stage. It's like when you pronounce important things, like when a child is born and someone says it's a boy or it's a girl. It's a performative act. Romanistan coming together. It's a performative act of happening and being. I understand because it's it, it's weird, you know. Because uh, but they did it in 2012. They made a book, like the government made a book. They wanted to. What did we do with the Romani travels and the Roma people? How how did we treat them? So they did a, a white book about what they were doing to us, and it was like uh, like a um, what do you call it? Um, uh, a proof of what they were doing and uh, interviews with a lot of Romani people and also. And the government was also uh, given the Romani people an apology. But the thing is that it's we have this book and we have this I knowledge, but we're not in the history books. So nobody knows about it. Like, uh, but it's like on the government side, and they are oh, we are so sorry what how we treated you during these years, and we're sorry for that we sterilized so many of the Romani travelers just because you were Romani, and. Uh, uh, so you know, but but it's uh, and th that's in, that in a way destroyed our our self esteem in a way. The Romani travelers, we are like uh, uh, struggling with that. And I also talked to my mother like some weeks ago, and I said like, oh my god, we are who are we? We are disappearing. My mother is very uh, fight <laughs> uh, Romani fighter, and she was like, and I said well, our language is disappearing. Everything is disappearing. She said, no, Lindy, listen. Facebook gonna save us. And I said, what? What, what do you mean? So she said, you know, you know, now we Romani travelers are starting again to like connect on this Facebook and we write to each other to on Romani and it's, um, and the, the, the language is starting to li uh, live again, Linda. It's, it's something is happening. We are, we are fighting, we are finding each other again. A place where we could have, uh, um, uh, the control of our of lives with no further uh, problems. That's what I I when the first moments when I when I was very young and I and I and I joined the the Roma struggle. The first thing I read was about that about this crazy project uh, of uh, <laughs> a future country for all Roma people. <laughs> Um, yeah, I knew then that, that there, there was this idea of, uh, just before the Nazi period and after the Nazi period, um, with some connection with, uh, Israel and this idea of taking all the Roma from Europe and you know, putting them in a place where, uh, they could be, uh, far away of the threats of Europe. But then, uh, as I, you uh, and I, start, I started studying history and even to try to question this assumption. I learned that there has been different attempts through history of moving the you know, Hitano population of, of Spain to uh, different places, like in America. But uh, although it was forbidden, but they, they there was a there, there was some proposal of some politicians through. The history of Spain, they're uh, trying to convince the king to move all the Gitanos to America. So at first, that, that, that was this idea of, okay, a future place where, uh, Roma people could be moved for different reasons. And then when I, I moved to Sevilla to study art history, I, I met a man, a historical, uh, activist of Sevilla. Dio Rafael, and he had a story, a funny story with this idea of Romanistan. Well, he he would he would use it the the Spanish translation, which would be uh, Gitania, huh? like the <laughs> Agalia, like you know these Roman names, no? Um, he 
envisioned he dreamed in a funny way that Hitania would be by the coast in the between the cities of Marbella and Fuengirola, which is like two very very touristic uh, touristic uh, cities of South Spain, <laughs> full of tourism. But he said that um, when we all uh, all the Hitans we, we would be there uh, and with no obligation to work. They would be only partying. Um, like non Roma people would be allowed. Uh, uh, they would they would be allowed to go in, uh, but before they they had to make like a, like a blood pact, you know, like you cut your. <laughs> um, yeah, and there there wouldn't be police, and uh, so that that was his way of uh, explaining this uh, idea of Hitania, and uh, he 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 confessed me that him. That some people took it for like for a serious idea, and I'm like, wow, you let's do that. <laughs> and then obviously, when I started getting knowledge of the history of Romani activism, then I realized that that was something more serious. And uh, Romani Union, no, like uh, Iru, they they use it as a Part of the campaigns, no, internationally, um, and there was this. Uh, there is this very, very unknown uh, for the general Roma public, who is uh, Lionel Rotaru, this Romanian refugee in France, who after the the Second World War. He started to create this kind of um, crazy idea of Romanistan with the aim of raising awareness of the victims of the Romani victims of the Holocaust. And obviously, uh, the way he did it, depending who is reading the, the, the uh, who is telling the, the the story, but the way he he, he did it was uh, a way to challenge the system of representation, challenge the system of a nation state and procedures to decide. And even um, the way those uh, bureaucracy and political system in terms of administrative uh, uh, structures, the way they, they work. So he registered the Romanistan in his flat in Paris. He, yeah, uh, he, he developed a series of, uh, of uh, strategical uh, relationships with uh, ambassadors. With, he, he used to go to, to gatherings of uh, embassies and this kind of places. And, Introduce himself as sometimes as the king of Romanistan or, or as, as an ambassador. So he was like uh, trying to, um, well, he knew it was, well, I guess that the people around him knew that that was a fake idea, but it's, he was trying to challenge you know, the, the systems. Uh, he, he even, the, there's a, well, the, the sad story of, of that is obviously is that that French uh, secret police was after after him. Uh, he was interrogated and and it was declared illegal as an illegal organization. Um, there is this moment in which because he was uh, also uh, giving passports. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> to Romani citizens of. So different countries. And there is this story of, uh, I think it's uh, Holland um, Romani women in Austria, and they crossed the border and they showed the passport of Romanistan. And obviously the police stopped them and <laughs> demanded what, what, what is this? And then uh, apparently Lionel came, I don't know if, if, it's, if he was in Paris where he lived, but he came to to represent the rights of the citizens of Romanistan, um, to defend these women. And uh, obviously he was, uh, under <laughs> problems because he had to, he had to answer the questions of the Austrian authorities. What, what is this? Okay. I, I made a, like a, like a 
messy resume of this project of Romanistan. But um, that that happened just less than a year before the 1971 Congress in London. Uh, Leonel wasn't invited or wasn't involved in the, in the organization of, of that important Congress for us. No? And, and for me, the moment that I, that I got to know this, I got in shock because, well, obviously this man is uh, this kind of character that uh, tried to break the, the system from inside, no? So he was aware of that and he did what he thought it was necessary to to do because he knew that if you follow the what we have been doing later, which is the processes of uh, emancipation, activism, claiming for rights. So somehow he was aware that, that if you do that, it would take ages to get the rights. So he was trying to find a, diff a shortcut or, or, well, as I say earlier, to challenge the way of approaching the rights. So for him, as I understand, Romanistan, uh, beyond the, what for us now, after knowing this, can be seen as a crazy, funny idea. So at the end, Romanistan is a, is a utopia that we can use as a metaphor um, to not only to claim rights, but to affirm rights. Like we don't need to demand the rights to those who deny the rights to us. So it's like saying, no, the rights are there. So let's take it. So that's why I see that it's a utopia that works not only to be to plan a struggle to get rights, but to affirm that the rights are given and <laughs> are given because we could be citizens of this utopian Romanistan. Well, uh, it was as big as to the French government to consider it uh, dangerous. In 2020, it's time to, 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 to say clearly that the problems are not, again, the Roma, but what the societies, the systems, the countries have not been doing during the last 50 years. Because uh, it's amazing if you go to the agreements um, that the different countries that the, the Western democracies, the European democracies have signed to promote the rights of minorities um, in many in different international levels. Uh, it's amazing that every Every year, there has to be a declaration say, saying, hey, we have to recognize the right of Roma people to, <laughs> to control their life, to have their own resources, to speak their own language, to, to research their history. So it's amazing that we had to remind democracies to respect the right of Romani people. So, and then, because they don't do that, they put the... The, the pressure on Roma people, like um, you, we had to be <laughs> always demanding um, that our rights are given. Gacha people don't exist. Let's tell you why, because that's a war that it's coming from the cosmogony of Romani people. It's, it's a war that belongs to the the way of see the wall of Romani people. So, well, in, when I see the use of Kache outside the Roma people, it's, it's for me, it's like out of context. So again, well, let's see from uh, what do we understand 
people uh, of uh, what should be our society. No, and um, obviously I would speak uh, of the Hitama people because it's the the, the, the um, group I belong to. But I I can also make uh, I I'm also part of that society. So um, so that's that's why the the, the challenge is not only for us but for you no so um being exposed to the idea of romanistan in 2020 in the congress because we are this kind of countries like france like other countries that they don't recognize ethnicity as a way to be politically organized um that's a problem because if you are only considered at at what people think at ethnicity is, then you don't exist. <laughs> you don't exist in political or social relationships. You only you only exist as a problem. So well, that's a very narrow uh, idea of what could be uh, uh, belonging. Uh, Berlin, no? Oh, how? Yeah, because well, Julius Rosas would say that because the lack of re uh, definition of what Romanian identity is, um, it's that uh, it will explain these kind of problems of representation and and represented. Well, I'm still on it. I'm still of trying to find a balance between. Uh, Public recognition, um, trying to um, to know what what this recognition would um, would be, and if that recognition uh, uh, for what 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 things we 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 would get from that recognition, because so if that recognition that it's not coming from and it's not a company it's not a company with uh, con concrete practical uh, measures it 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 will end in what we have seen during the last 50 years that uh, roma people has been recognized yeah yeah they are recognized but <laughs> they have to demand every year the rights that have have been recognized so it's not they have the rights of Roman people have been recognized, but they have, they have not been uh, like realized. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the second step. No, okay, you recognize me. You re re recognize my right of being of of controlling um, my resources. Yeah, so let's go. <laughs> let's proceed. And that's the problem that national governments don't want to um, to get rid of this control of Romani populations. And that's something that maybe this idea of Romanistan was a problem. But in this moment of Europe, that, you know, we have this Catalan example or all the different uh, little countries that appeared. Imagine that now if we, again, we try to raise up a new version of Romanistan, <laughs> then the question of who is going to recognize that institution, who is, who is going to, is it going to be a country? Is it going to be um, recognized by Europe or by, by the United Nations? this kind of problems no? actually um i heard about this idea a long time ago about romanistan but i didn't feel really much uh, identify about uh, uh, romanistan thing since uh, i'm not really much na nationalist but then i um, started to go a bit more deep into the, the the concept, and at the beginning was a bit uh, confusing for me because uh, I, I 
I didn't feel like uh, going anywhere to to take my places to go uh, another thing to to live. Like uh, I want to go back to India to to make my life. No, I didn't feel that. So I, I saw that idea, not really for me. But then I I'm working now in as an activist. So I work in Europe in in a big cycle of people who are doing the same in the rights for Roma. And I started to see this as a lobby. No, it's a group of people who are making political lobby in favor of Roma, right? So I started to see Romanistan as a way of calling this lobby, you know? And making this lobby more and more big and more and more powerful. And not uh, really linked to any um, geographical place. Romanistan, um, it's not uh, anywhere, but it's everywhere. You know? Romanistan is a uh, very uh, rich uh, people in cultural heritage because it's made from Roma from everywhere. It's made from the flamenco people, from the north of, of Europe people, from the people from uh, Roma from Brazil, and for the Rom non-Roma people who want to, to be part of the project and ask for a more uh, fair and more Roma-like uh, world, you know? So I started to think about this and to think about the idea of uh, being like an ambassador of this uh, virtual country and avoiding all the problems that the physical uh, countries have, you know, mm, wars and conflicts and all a lot of things that are coming from geographical place. But the virtual state uh, place, it's uh, easier, but mm, you, you can become a, a strong actor in, in politics since you have uh, at least of, of uh, more than, I don't know, 20 million people in the world, Roma, and a lot of people who are pro-Roma people who can also get the passport or the identity, we, we can be, I don't know, a, a strong lobby. If you have Roma people in these places, you can change things in, I don't know, in 20 years, in 30, very quick. Uh, uh, for that, you, you need a strong lobby, putting people in the right places. That's what Romanistan could make. And that's something that Romanistan will make uh, be, uh, uh, true. Well, that, that will empower, you know, the the, mm, the learning and teaching of uh, Romanes in every way. Uh, also, I think that we the different cultures, as as the Roma stammen, also while the Roma zurzeit in different Ländern leben, uh, irgendwie mischen können und uh, zusammenbringen. Uh, Ich denke auch, dass Romanistan eine, ein Land ist, das uns auch Vertrauen gibt, Zuversicht äh, und gute Vorstellungen für, für unsere Zukunft. Äh, wir können auch eine spezifische Benennung für, für Romanistan äh, denken, wie zum Beispiel, es ist mir gerade eingefallen, äh, United States of Romanistan wegen der äh, sozusagen äh, der äh, multikulturellen Austausch. Das wäre auch eine, eine Aussicht. 
Ja, also ich kann mir gut vorstellen, dass die Roma auch voneinander lernen können in diesem Land. Und auch in diesem Land können äh, verschiedene Möglichkeiten für die Ausländer äh, angeboten werden, wie zum Beispiel die aus den Nachbarländern stammen können, wenn es um ein eigentliches Land geht, sozusagen. Wie Und wenn Romanistan ein als ein echtes Land sein würde, könnte ich mir gut vorstellen, dass dieses Land in Südasien liegt. Jedes Land könnte auch virtuell sein, damit wir die Diversität und die, der kulturellen Austausch besser darstellen können. Und weil auch jede Gruppe von Roma eine andere Kultur hat. Und das wäre interessanter, meiner Meinung nach. Ja, also das Land hat auf jeden Fall Politikerinnen und Politiker und natürlich auch einen Präsident. Aber ich will im Grunde genommen sagen, dass jede Gruppe von Roma auch eine Stadt in diesem Land äh, vertreten kann und äh, dadurch könnte auch eine einen entsprechenden Präsident gewählt werden. Mhm. Also wofür sollen die Roma Menschen kämpfen? Äh, sie sie kämpfen auf jeden Fall für die Durchsetzung der Gerechtigkeit. Sie setzen sich für die Gerechtigkeit in der Gesellschaft ein, sie für die Gleichheit, für die eine bessere Erziehung für ihre Kinder und ja, also auch für die Entwicklung eines Rechtsstaates und Sozialstaates. Ja, also in der Schule haben wir uns in Rumänien niemals mit dem Thema Roma auseinandergesetzt. Es ging nur darum, in einer Lektion, in, der, in dem Geschichtsunterricht, darum, dass die Roma versklavt wurden, als sie nach Rumänien gekommen sind. Und das war's. Wir haben uns niemals mit der Roma-Sprache auseinandergesetzt und so. Um ehrlich zu sein, bin ich niemals in Rumänien wirklich mit Rassismus konfrontiert worden. Also ich wurde nur einmal von einem Mitschüler, einem ehemaligen Mitschüler, als äh, Zigeuner beleidigt. Aber das war nicht so eine Sache, die mich äh, zum äh, Weinen gebracht hat und so. Aber <lacht> das, äh, ich, fühl, ich fühlte mich nicht beleidigt, weil äh, ich bin ein Roma und es ist wie genauso, wenn ich in einem Deutschen, wenn ich einem Deutschen sagen würde, dass er ein Deutscher ist. Und das war nicht. Ja, also für mich, ich habe mich niemals richtig ausgegrenzt gefühlt, um ehrlich zu sein. Aber in Deutschland fühle ich mich fremd. Ja. In Rumänien habe ich mich als Rumäne gefühlt, obwohl ich Roma war, weil äh, größtenteils sind die Roma auch gut in, den, in, den, in der rumänischen Gesellschaft integriert, weil manche sehr gut Rumänisch sprechen können und manche äh, gute, eine gute Ausbildung haben und manche sind sogar Ärzte oder äh, das, äh, Rechts, Rechtsanwälte oder äh, Staatsanwälte, aber ja, also ich würde nicht sagen, dass äh, man äh, aufgrund äh, seiner äh, Herkunft in Deutschland ausgegrenzt wird, sondern aufgrund der äh, Sprache. Also wenn man kein Deutsch spricht, äh, wird man einfach nicht äh, geholfen. 
Also ich werde auf jeden Fall als Ausländer angesehen. Ich, ich kann schon äh, fühlen, dass ich äh, verantwortlich für äh, das Bild der Roma bin und deshalb äh, versuche ich immer äh, einen guten Eindruck zu machen. Also ein guter Eindruck für mich bedeutet, dass man auch äh, eine dass man nicht aus einem verbrecherischen Milieu stammt. Das ist mein, meine Idee. Und äh, ich äh, versuche immer äh, den Eindruck zu geben, dass ich, äh, dass die Menschen mir vertrauen können, dass sie, dass sie sich auf mich verlassen können. Äh, und deshalb äh, kann ich nicht äh, sagen, dass, äh, äh, auch, dass ich dass ein Druck auf mich ist, weil äh, ich eine offene Person bin und äh, ich versuche immer äh, freundlicher zu sein. Ja, also ich versuche zurzeit verschiedene Programmiersprachen zu lernen <lacht> und deshalb äh, kann ich mir gut vorstellen, dass ich die Website äh, mitgestalten kann. Und äh, ja, also ich könnte auch äh, jede Gruppe von Roma äh, eine, eine Stadt übergeben. Also diese Gruppe von Roma ist diese Stadt aus Romanistan, diese Gruppe von Roma ist eine andere Stadt aus Romanistan. Das würde ich machen. Es, könnte auch, es könnten auch Online-Städte sein, aber es könnten auch, äh, also wenn wir äh, uns eine, einen echten Stadt vorstellen, dann geht es um echte Städte und existierende Städte wie Berlin. Aber in dieser Zeiten, in den Zeiten von Corona und äh, diese expandierenden Globalisierung, äh, können wir uns nur äh, Online-Städte vorstellen. Und äh, ja, ich würde sagen, dass wir jede Gruppe von Roma eine Online-Stadt sein könnte und sie sprechen miteinander, aber sie müssen nicht unbedingt aus dem gleichen Land kommen. Also sie könnten auch aus den USA, äh, aus der Türkei, aber sie sind äh, Urzari oder eine die gleiche Sekte und sie sprechen den gleichen Dialekt und sie können äh, eine Stadt vertreten und äh, eine andere Gruppe von Roma, also sie können auch eine andere Stadt aus Romanistan äh, vertreten und die meisten Migli Mitglieder könnten nur aus Osteuropa sein und Westeuropa. Ich würde aufgrund der Sprache kategorisieren, weil auch in Deutschland diese Sache ist, also ein, ein Mann von Ber aus Berlin spricht ganz unterschiedlich äh, und im Gegensatz zu einem Mann aus Bayern oder aus äh, äh, Hamburg. Und das ist auch in Rumänien so. Äh, 